The new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 7501 has just been released. Let's have a look at the specifications in this video and see if this one is as interesting as last year's model, the 7590. Spoiler alert, I don't think it is. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. And if you like this video after watching it, I would be really happy if you wanted to subscribe to this channel so that you can get all the content I'm going to be putting out in the upcoming weeks and months. The new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 is live in both the UK Dell store and in the Swedish Dell store. But it's not yet live in the US and India store. So a lot of my viewers are usually from the US and India and you might just have to wait a few days before this one goes live in your country. Let's jump right over to the specifications and see what we can find. The most common specifications are pretty much the same and there's not too much there where we can see a difference compared to last year's model. It has been upgraded to the 10th generation Intel Core Edge processors and you can choose between an i5 and an i7 processor. You can now get it with up to GTX 1650 Ti, which is different from last year when it was only up to GTX 1650. You can then get it with a 1TB hard drive and 16GB of memory, which is similar and that is also upgradable. Getting down to the actual models here, we can see that they have published three different models in the UK store. And one of them is a really cheap one at £829 and the other ones are around £1200-£1300. And they differ quite a bit. So the cheapest one is with the i5 processor and this is the 10300H processor. It's got 8GB RAM and 256GB SSD. Its starting weight is 4.18 pounds. This is roughly 1.9 kilograms. And one of the main selling points of the 7590 from 2019 was that the starting weight was around 1.7 kilos. I think the starting weight of 1.9 kilos makes this computer a bit less interesting to begin with. And if it would motivate these extra 200 grams, it really has to pack something extra for me to want to upgrade to the 2020 model. Moving down to the more specified specifications here, we can see that this one also comes with Intel UHD graphics. So this is not with a dedicated graphics card. And this is quite new compared to last year as well, because there was no model available without dedicated graphics in 2019. So this is a new option where if you want to go a bit cheaper, you're able to remove the dedicated GPU and get a bit of a cheaper machine. However, it doesn't state anywhere if it would then also be a bit lighter compared to the one with the dedicated GPU. The more expensive models come with the i7 processor and this is the 10750H processor. They both come with the same processor and the same amount of RAM and the big difference there is that one come with 512GB SSD and one come with 1TB SSD. But since this computer still comes with an extra slot for another SSD, you won't worry that much about getting 512 or 1 terabyte, because you can throw in a 2 terabyte SSD in that extra slot. But scrolling down to further specifications, we also see that the middle one come with GTX 1650 and GTX 1650 Ti in the top model. Looking at the screen options, they all seem to have the same full HD non-touch screen. So that's quite interesting because the top model in the 2019 version would have that 4K 500 nit screen. And this one doesn't seem to be available, at least not yet. Maybe this is an option that will be added at a later stage. I would say so far so good. There are no big problems about the computer just looking at specification. But now coming to the more detailed specification of the RAM, I think it gets really interesting. Here it specifies that in the cheaper model, there's eight gigabytes on board memory. So this is a soldered memory stick of eight gigabytes, which means that upgradability has been downgraded quite severely because you used to have two RAM sticks where you could upgrade both of them. And for example, get the laptop with eight gigabytes of RAM and then upgrade it even up to 32 gigabytes later down the road. Also in the more expensive models, you'll have 16 gigabytes where eight gigabytes will be on board and eight gigabytes would be in a SODIMM, so in a separate RAM stick. This is also worse than last year, in my opinion, because last year you would get one RAM stick of 16 gigabytes and then you'd be able to put in another 16 gigabyte and have an immediate 
32 gigabytes RAM. Moving further down, it gets even more interesting because we can see here that they have gone from three USB 3.1 ports to two USB 3.1 ports. I think one of the really big upsides about the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 7590 from last year was that you had both the USB-C Thunderbolt port, the three regular USB-A ports, and an HDMI port. Now they are skimping down a lot on the port selection, and we're starting off to see that it only has two USB-A ports. The second thing we can see here is that it has an optional 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port with display port and power delivery. So it's not a Thunderbolt 3 port for the options with integrated graphics and GTX 1650. This I find to be really, really bad as a decision from Dell. You actually have to go for the top model to get that Thunderbolt port and when you have the top model, you have the most powerful graphics card. So with the 1650 Ti, you're gonna be able to play a lot of games. And it's with especially the model that has the integrated graphics that it would make perfect sense to be able to hook it up to an external GPU via Thunderbolt and play games when you're in a docked situation at a desk. We continue by seeing that it also has an optional HDMI 2.0 port, but only for the discrete graphic card option. It has a HDMI 1.4 for the integrated graphics card option. It has a universal audio jack and it has a DC import, so they're not moving to USB-C only. This all in all is quite a downgrade compared to last year's model, where we both have less USB-A ports, not Thunderbolt 3, except in the top model, and we have an HDMI port that is only 1.4 in the model with integrated graphics and 2.0 only in the ones with dedicated graphics. Continuing down, we see that there are some solid upgrades in the wireless department. We have both Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. This is something that the 2019 model was lacking, so I'm super happy to see that Wi-Fi 6 is finally part of the laptop. However, it was still a replaceable module, so I would be able to put a Wi-Fi 6 card into my laptop if I wanted to do that. The battery is still with the options of a 3-cell 56-watt-hour battery or a 6-cell 97-watt-hour battery. The Dell XPS 15 2020 model has changed from a 97 watt hour battery as max capacity to an 86 watt hour battery. So it's quite nice to see that Dell Inspiron 15 is staying on that 97 watt hour battery. Let's see if we find any other interesting data while scrolling through the rest of this product description. They talk a bit about the processors, they talk about the screen and they talk about RAID array. This is where I read out that it will be an extra SSD slot in it so that you can run those two SSDs in RAID. I think that is one of the most important features of the 2019 model, and if that feature was scrapped, this would not even be an interesting laptop anymore, in my opinion. Then they say Thunderbolt 3, which is now optional and not in all the models and that there are some new thermal systems. This is quite interesting, because if we look at this image here, we see that they have a hinge that puts the laptop a bit more of an angle, which means that they can get a bit more airflow coming in under it. That would be able to work a bit with the different issues that has been around temperature and make the laptop run a little bit cooler than last year's model. They talk a bit about weight, but I don't know why they're talking about weight since this is actually a heavier laptop than the last year's model. And it's quite annoying because that was one of the main unique selling points for it. A bit of a different chassis as well, where it's this kind of rounded edge in the back, which is also part of this to make the hinge lift the computer up a little bit and let some more air in from the bottom. And we can see last but not least the port selection down here, which is what we were talking about before when we looked at the specification. So what do I think about it all in all? Is this a computer worth a purchase? I would say that I'm not that impressed at first look. The reason why I really enjoyed Dell Inspiron 15 7000 7590 from 2019 was mainly because of the light weight starting at 1.7 kilograms. The amazing port setup with three USB-A ports and the Thunderbolt port and the HDMI port. And then the upgradability where it had this extra SSD slot and two RAM sticks so I could upgrade it to 16GB 
or 32 gigabytes if I wanted to. Now, the cheaper models with only 8 gigabytes integrated memory will not be upgradable to 32 gigabytes. You will still have that extra SSD possibility, but starting weight of 1.9 kilograms without having any extra feature or anything new that makes this laptop actually worth it, and then removing Thunderbolt in everything but the top model, I am not convinced. And I will have to have some solid specification upgrades for some top models that maybe are not available with a new screen option, for example, to be able to recommend this laptop. Another thing that could make it more interesting would be if it down the line is introduced an AMD version. So maybe AMD Ryzen 4000 series CPUs would be something that would make these laptops a bit more powerful and a bit more running cool compared to the Intel alternatives. With the specifications that are available right now of the 7501, I would actually not choose it. I would still pick up a 7590 from last year, even if it's got an older processor, I think the total package is way more worthwhile than the 2020 model. The only theory I have about why they have made these changes is that this will actually make the XPS lineup more attractive. I thought the Inspiron lineup from last year, the one I've been making all my videos about, was a bit too good at times. It kind of beat up the XPS, even though it was supposed to be a less good computer compared to the top of the line XPS lineup. Now when the new XPS 15 and the new XPS 17 is live, and this new model of Inspiron for 2020 is live, Dell XPS 15 seems like a more attractive package in total than Dell Inspiron 15. This is the way it's probably supposed to have been from the beginning, but with last generation it definitely wasn't that way. I would and will be looking more into the Dell XPS 15 and consider that for a future review series, but still today I think the most interesting laptop for me to buy and make another review series about will be the Lenovo Slim 7. Do you have any questions or comments about the new Inspiron 15 lineup? Please write them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer as quickly as possible. I am W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspiration and I hope I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day, bye bye!